Hello. Welcome back to Summer Sea. Let's go to. Do we want to go to Ganpo? Let's go to Ganpo. in Ganpo. Let's... Oh, assist the fading house back. She has enough in her for one more divination. This is your last chance to watch the house backs at work. <sighs> okay. Hmm. What if I join the old sailors? The pounding of their approach echoes from the dark ventricles. They will be here soon. The housebacks and her disciples pull back once they see you enter the melee. Ancient sailors are one thing, a captain in their prime is another. You kneel by the dying creature and dig in. Handfuls of entrails, steaming fresh, they slide down your throat and your stomach begs for more. The juice of ancient blubber, the chewy muscles and crunch of bone, eat. Let the blood drip down your chin and stain your hands the red that can never truly be washed away. The beast mewling will end soon. Oh. Will she still die? Okay. I can still speak with her. Let's get Poi Pot first. Deliver the lost pilgrim. Oh, yes. What poor soul would come here willingly, but she seems happy at least. A soul with nothing left to lose. At last, my pilgrimage is complete. She sighs with contentment. Slowly, reverently, she hands you a small bag of coins and an icon of Saint Croton the Lost. Everything is left behind. I'm free. She wanders down a stone artery. A worn shoe scratches in the blubber of a dead beast. Without breaking stride, her foot slides free and she continues into the dark. Okay, 50 echo and an outlandish artifact. Okay. Let's speak with the fading house bags. Um Ask about the traveler. Okay. Metal Laker still cannot do that. Maybe not yet. Maybe when I do the last house spicy, then she'll talk to me about the thing that I need. Okay, I think that's all we could do here. I think we ate that thing, right? So I don't get the 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 meat for the merchant in Chapel Eight. Oh well, oh well. Okay. Now we shall go to... Hmm... Let's go to Khan's Shadow because we do need fuel. Oh, isn't it cheaper in Khan's Heart? And then we go Polytrim and Empire Hands. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay.
can't start again. I know I'll be coming back here a lot, but I'm trying to get something when, when I'm wandering Khan's heart. Mm. Uh, not you again. Sure, I'll assist you. Yep. Uh, I'm supposed to be able to find this one shop where I could buy an item that is needed for the curator in Vandalite. Oh, it's all the colors. But it seems like it's not meant for this voyage. in polytrim I can warn some merchants about rack that's right the tavern patrons are so ro raucous the sobbing of the cups seem well behaved in comparison evidently the sailors will soon travel rack on a lucrative contract the captain is buying rounds for everyone despite the beers gurgled prayers for deliverance his sailors dance on the table that groans and whimpers the captain welcomes you with a clap on the back and asks you what you'd like to drink on this happy occasion. Perhaps not so happy, you say. By the end of your story, the captain and his sailors are all groaning in unison with the rest of Polytrim. Nevertheless, after he blows his nose into a demoralized handkerchief, he conveys his thanks and passes you a small but exceedingly noisy reward. It should quiet once you leave the aisle. Okay. Yup, yup, yup. Got echoes. And then... I can cure the sharpness you gain in MT. Ooh. This will not change your capacity for sharpness or remove any permanent MT advantage you may carry. Ooh. Sure, enough time in Polytrim and your sharpness will dissolve back to flesh. Warm and flexible again. The blood flows, the flesh bends, your discipline and skill decrease, your desire and feeling return. Oh wait. Oh. Okay. Is this a good or bad? I have no idea. Let's there. Hunt clothes colonies with the Modis. Their abundance of life offers many artistic possibilities. A thinness of resolve. The Modis stalks for prey past chittering rocks and wailing pools, living shirts, walking trousers, or lonely left shoe seeking a partner. All immediately rip and tear at even her exploratory cuts and stitches, their strange zest gone like the popping of a soap bubble. This will not do, she declares, discarding another reject. Clearly, I must petition the king. If it is in his power to animate these miserable rags, he can certainly do a better job. Excuse me, captain. I shall return presently. Okay. Modis is on a mission. What else? I can gather intelligence, port report. Yep. And hmm, I don't have cargo space, unfortunately. Pretty full. Okay, what does the Modis need now? Okay, check on her. Her audience with the king with 100 hearts did not go well. 
tension relief. The modiste is face down on her bunk, but that doesn't prevent her from berating the unlucky crewman pressed into massaging the knots from her back. The king is a vulgarian of the worst flavor. She announces, I bring him the once in a lifetime chance for cultural immortality, and all he can think of is payment. What is stop? Enough of this incompetent finger play. Get out of my sight before I write down your name. She sits up, scowling. He wants the pirate poets. Of course he does. Not unfinished, but not obeying her clay. Such an anomaly. The poor little pebble. Hmm, this may be difficult. She was a dear friend once. She knows better than to let me use that against her. Okay... Oh, she's being hunted? Hunting the parrot poet, the modiste has a plan. Sending a challenge. Yes, she was part of our set for a while. Such a naive little thing. Most squeamish in matters of the arts. The modiste paces around, lost in thought. She will be difficult to track down unless... She turns back, triumphant. Captain, to London! There is an Ushapti in the Museum of Mistakes that will greatly ease our search. I shall explain everything on arrival. Okay. Back to London we go then, I guess. Yep. I think that's all we can do in Polytreme, so let's go to Empire of Hands to deliver the Hydrogen. <laughs> in the Empire of Hands. Let's get port report and then the Zeppelin. Deliver hydrogen to the Zeppelin. Yep. Okay, one more. One more. An audience with the civilized mayor. He's civilized now? Talk business? Why, yes, yes, of course we shall. But after a cup of tea, one must do these things correctly. A polite welcome. Darling, do come in. The civilized mayor purrs. Whatever can I do for you? The soul of the delightful adventurer sits comfortably in him. A four soul ape of cold ambition and very few scruples. Oh... Because he got the delightful adventurer's soul, okay. 20 echoes for supplies, that's not too bad, but I need fuel. Ah, uh, yeah, fuel is expensive, never mind then. You still want the same things. Okay. There's nothing much to do here, but since we do have something awaits you, let's go to... let's leave the court first. Go here. Go to the officers and speak to the sigil ridden navigator. Because we do need uh, something awaits you to talk to him about this. The ship's surgeon finds you. He's awake, citizen, and he's asking for you. The navigator has slept fitfully since he collapsed on the frostbound ice. New purpose. His sigil has grown. It reaches down his cheek now. The skin it marks is pitted and grey. Captain, the eyes told me. The sigil's reflection was its opposite. Or inverse, it doesn't matter. We must go north. North and north and north. To the avid horizon. To void's approach. He struggles to rise. Where are my charts? My compass? My sounding line? Okay. We can do that. We shall go to Estival first. No, we'll go to Dahut. We have to go to Dahut. Nook, Estival, Hideaway. Yeah, we're just winging it at this point. 
Let's go with that hood first. Okay, we are back in the hood. Let's stay a while. Yep, we need recent news to come in. Yep, the city of peace. Yep. Let me see. Oh, this is the one. Sing a song of broken hulls. Ah, to gain clarity, I see, I see. I think this is a chancy challenge for all of these. I'm gonna look for other visitors first. Yeah, one clarity. Yep. And then we shall. Shall search for secret places of the hood. Clarity. The staircase under the cathedral. If you stand at the bottom of the stairs and listen at the crypt gate, you hear sounds that do not come from the dead. You hear sobbing and the names of lost sweethearts and expressions of anger. You hear regrets over decisions taken poorly. Today, your fascination with the hood does not increase. Okay. Investigate the crypt of the great cathedral. What is its purpose? Why isn't it quieter down there? Okay. Attend closely. Hmm. I need more recent news to stay a while. assemble a party port. Oh, is that it? A stock festival? Let's use this. Sing a song of broken hulls. Reveal this place as it is. A treason against the laws of breeding and swimming. Fuel your lungs. You sing, and the drownings around turn. Arrested to stare at you. They do not want to hear this song. The cathedral beams quick And you see that the buttresses are also the bones of wreck. Yeah, yeah And yep, that's it. Goodbye You have been here long enough for your departure to be honored with a farewell party. This will end your stay unambitiously with a small reward. Okay. Oh, I failed. As friends, you part on pleasant terms with kind words on both sides. They give you a necklace of drowning pearls and tell you to return when you have fresh news of London. Okay. The hood is a mystery. And a bit complicated. We shall go to Nook next.
Finally, it is time I'm back in Nook. Okay, let's return to Nook. I have mushroom wine this time. You have the measure of the place now, and you have learned that the liberal ingestion of wine before a visit increases your tolerance for Nook water. Undressing for adventure. Again, you remove your clothes and put them safely in the watertight diving suit compartment. As the water rushes in, you are ready, taking gulps to speed the transition. It feels less like drowning now and more like baptism. You swim into Nook with skin and mind tingling, reborn in the airlock's cold steel. The beast quivers with distaste at your trespass. Oh well, I'm coming. Um, let's do this one. This one, delivering the letter. Search for the recipient of the almost dead man's letter. Where will you find this etched tooth house? 72% chance. Hmm. Taste of freedom. Okay, I need to do the taste of freedom. But let me get a port report first. Okay. Okay, I do get I do gain a uh, taste of freedom here. Oh, it's a it's a low risk challenge now. Let's do one more thing. Let's swim downwards to the serrated abyss. Down here the water is cloudy, its greens streaked by dissipating patches of coppery red. Only a few teeth still protrude from the walls. Instead, razor-sharp hairs line them, rippling gently in the current. Ah. Can trace Olay's fruit for phosphorescent nodules. Ooh. Accept a scandalous invitation. Ah. Okay. Let's accept a scandalous invitation. Two nook folk, languorously entangled, swim past. Their fingers twine in the water, their arms stray over bare skin. One smiles at you, beckons. What happens in Nook? The two lovers lead you to a tooth the size of a London manor. It is riddled with cavens, gently lit by lambent nodules. In each caven, lovers seethe. You find a chamber of your own. Hands explore, lips touch, acquaintances deepen. Ah. I have one Nook, a memory of Nook. Okay, I've lost terror. Gain two tastes of freedom, and I have two phosphorescent nodule. Okay. Oh, I can return to Nook. Oh, okay, okay. That uses the something awaits you. Okay. Okay, but this is a straightforward challenge now. Search for the recipient of the almost dead man's letter. Where will you find this etched tooth house? A man lost in freedom. A complex exchange of hand signals suggests you should swim up. The latitudinarian's home can be found in the Great Mall. Okay. Let's swim upwards then. I can... Join some tooth miners or investigate an etched tooth house. A flinty latitudinarian keeps its upper cavities filled with compressed air, allowing a number of activities otherwise impossible in watery nook. Interesting. The external surface of the tooth is covered with engravings, rows of battling soldiers, some with the heads of dogs, a mountain ablaze, ships riding on a river, and each ship has a human mouth. You seem inside and up to chambers of eggy air. Ooh. The flinty latitudinarian. In the cavities of his etched tooth home, trap air pockets allow an activity largely forsaken in Nook. Conversation. A handful of Nook folk gather there to reminisce. Brevity is admired. The air is precious and rapidly fouls. The latitudinarian watches and listens. He keeps a merciless peace within his house and cares not a damn for what happens outside it. I can greet Batuk or deliver the almost dead man's letter. Yeah, greet Batuk. You recognize him from Miriam's statues. The same enviable chin, 
the same heavy set shoulders, the same scowl. The gentleman protests too much. He screams at you. No, he says. No what? No, I am done with responsibility and causes. I am here to be left alone. What goes on out there isn't my concern, not anymore. Interesting, then, that he chooses to preside over the only place in Nook where people come to speak of the wider world. Perhaps if you shared some of your own experiences, you could remind him what he's missing. Perhaps you can convince Bartok to rejoin the Seven. Okay. I can deliver the almost dead man's letter. The flinty latitudinarian takes it suspiciously. He reads slowly. Correspondence is unknown in Nook. When he finishes, he reads it again. Fool, he says. His voice is rough and thorn. Tell Lorenzo that Rosina makes her own choices, and tell him the route was never his damn fault. I took the decision to charge the gate. I missed the hyena's approach. He blames himself for too much, and I'll be damned if he's taking this one from me. It's my fault. I mean to be buried with it. Tell him he can get his own failures, and tell him. No, never mind. Too late. Too bloody late. Okay. Okay, delivering a wrong comrade's retribution. Okay. Got Nook, memory of Nook. Gain one secret. Gain a strategic information. Interesting. Okay. I have to give him one secret. There. Rekindle Batok's curiosity. It's your turn to speak. Tell them a lesson you learned at Z. Don't eat your crew. You tell of the Z's hunger, of the northern cold and the southern warmth, of storm and stone and salt. Batok feigns indifference, and you can tell he's listening. Oh. How many secrets do you need? I have a lot of secret anyway. Hopefully you don't take that many. Don't lose your mind. The Z teaches many lessons, and each one has a tale to it. The Nook folk listen closely, keeping their breathing slow to preserve the air. Batuk sits statue still, his broad soldier's hands clasped before him. When you finish your tale, Batuk asks a question. He contemplates your answer. Okay. Stop Batuk's rekindled curiosity. You have him on the line. He leans forward when you speak, his eyes misty with memory. To toll of the Z, you tell of drowned sailors and the Phantom King's feast, of the numberless wrecks that litter the deeps. Okay. Batok attends closely as you speak. Okay, one more time. The privilege of the mighty. You tell of the great leafy powers, the rogue masters, Comfortable in London's bazaar, the Khan, secure in his fortress, the Presbyter, reigning for a thousand years over his seven and seventy kingdoms. After the tale, Batuk springs to his feet and paces the cavity. Welcome Batuk back to the seven against Nina. Yes, all right. Try not to look so pleased with yourself. It wasn't that clever. You just reminded me how angry I am. Arrogant Presbyter bastards. It takes solid flint balls to monopolize immortality, I'll tell you that. You know, when we sacked Nida, I broke one of their tablets, the ones they keep their precious laws on, smash it on their pretty gemstone street. It said, the prester said, none shall set foot in Nida save he that was born there. He who violates this law shall be cast into the deepest deep and always forsaken. Well, bug that. Tell Miriam I'll be ready when she calls me. In the meantime, I'll start looking for some soldiers. The seven have found their commander. Yes! We have two now! Let's return to the Great Moor. Okay, let's... You can join some tooth miners. Sometimes treasures can be found caught in the teeth. Oh, I need more. Don't mind that. Let's swim down. Um, let's swim down some more. I 
can swim down some more to the bilious cleft. Oh, the old look folk swim this deep, where the water is foggier than a London pea super. Foul gas bubbles up from the bee skirt, acidic enough to sting your eyes. Ooh. Oh, I need more memory of Nook for this. I can swim down some more. Should I though? Okay, maybe not this time. Let's search for phosphorescent nodules. The Nook folk use them for light and guard them closely. When they do drop them though, the nodules sink down here, glowing between the teeth. Quick scavenging. You harvest a handful of the nodules. If you mean to venture deeper into the gullet, where there is only darkness and eye-burning waters, you need plenty of light. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, let's... Let's get more. Oh. Snap, snap. Not a nodule, not a nodule. Instead, it was the lambent eye of a giant leech creature which almost bit your fingers off. You managed to wrestle it into submission. It seems the Nook folk are not the only ones to call Nook home. Ah, interesting. More live specimens! Oh my god, what do I do with live specimens? Okay, let's get more phosphorescent nodules. Four! Quick scavenging, you have us a handful of the nodules. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, not bad, not bad. Let's get some more. Okay, let's... Maybe should go up. We'll do that next time. This is... Okay, so this one is kind of rare. But I guess for story's sake, trade Soleil's fruit for phosphorescent nodules. They will be a rare treat for the look folk. Sweetness and light. As expected, the Nook folk flock to take all the fruit you have to offer. They freely give up their nodules for a taste of the delightful juice. 20! Holy shit! Okay. Let's swim up. Okay. Take from the weak? Nah. Attempt to mingle with the Nook folk, sure. Okay. Okay, let's return to the submarine. Yep. Gain 5 Terra, Nook Torrents for Nook Butler quality has gone. Yep. The more time you spend in Nook, the more it will change you and unnerve your crew. Sacrifice memories of the flux of Igol to counter this effect. What? The crew murmurs as you pass. Your buttons are an irritation. You abandon the last tree. Your collar itches intolerably. You tuck it loose. You are perhaps not regulation straight. As you proceed to your quarters. Everything alright, citizen? A crewman asks warily. Oh, because I've spent too much time in Nook. I think someone mentioned about this. That don't spend too much time in Nook or else you won't. You crave the freedom. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Let's, let's leave for now. We got what we wanted here, which is one of the seven. Now we shall go to Hideaway. Okay, we're back in Mount Palmerston. Well, I have to make a detour because we ran out of fuel. 
Uh, let's stock up a lot on fuel this time. So I need to get soup as well later. Later, fine soup. <laughs> this why is it so creepy down here underneath Abbott Horizon I never knew this okay we are in Abbott Horizon let's lead the sigil ridden navigator to a certain dark pillar scraps of paper stiff with northern frost are stuffed into its cracks unforgiven a message is carved into the wood if you wish to return to london if you seek the forgiveness of the empress you will sacrifice all to make amends record your name and crime your navigator hunts through the slips of paper they are a library of villains and villainy. Here are murders, betrayals, treasons and perjuries. He stops, stares at one, pulls it free. This is mine, he says. I wrote this. It is a confession. Beneath, in more recent and less careful letters, he has added a note. You did not answer. If I cannot be forgiven, then I will forget. The Chapel of Lights will help me, for a price. He laughs wildly. Twice! I paid them twice! Once to take my memories and once to guide me back to them. His laughter deepens to hysteria. Two crewmen help you drag him back to your ship. Ah. Speak to your navigator on board to learn of his confession. Okay. Captain, may I speak with you in private? His voice is dull, his sigil drops, red as embers in the nitty gloom. His forgotten crime. He hands you his confession, retrieved from Void's approach. Please, read. Okay. A square of paper folded into quarters to make a booklet. Read the first page. To whom it may concern, I hereby record my full and honest confession in the hopes of absolution in Her Enduring Majesty's service. In May, my brother Richard and I took service on the Bonnie Swan. He as bosun, I as navigator. The captain, Swinburne, was a good man, but ambitious. When we reached King Ita's castle, our supplies were low. But we pressed on in the hope of finding land. There was none. Okay. Read the second page. Our stores nearly depleted. We turned back, and here I committed the first of my crimes. I mistook my readings and set a bad course. For days we steamed northwest, not west, into the empty dark. Our supplies ran out, and still no sign of port. Hunger set in, and terror, and what I pray was madness, ravening, desperate, raving. We agreed to draw lots, with the loser giving up life and flesh, so the others could go on. Oh. Read the third page. The first of us to draw the short straw was the captain. The second was my brother. My dear, solemn, solid Richard. There were more after. Seven times we drew. Seven of our number went into the port, and not a one of them quietly. Those of us who made it back to port swore never to speak of our crime. But one of us, someone with a keener conscience than mine, confessed. I fled the noose to Z again. I regret it all. I will do anything, please. 
read the fourth page. Here he scribbled his later note, when the Emirati failed to select him for absolution through service. You did not answer. If I cannot be forgiven, then I will forget. The trouble of lights will help me for a price. His eyes meet yours when you look up from the page. They are dull as old iron. I am done, citizen. I am done. I have one last thing to ask of you. His last request. The truth has broken him. Parting ways. He buries his face in his hands. Even if I could remember, I would not want to. But it is only a matter of time until this. He runs a finger over his sigil. Takes something I can't do without. Maybe I will forget how to breathe. Or which way is north. Perhaps I will strand us all at Z again. And it'll be oats of silence and straws in the dark. Be rid of me, citizen. Put me ashore somewhere I can be forgotten. Your sigil reader navigator wishes to retire. Speak with him to learn where he might find peace. Ask where he would like to disembark. Leave me on Codex where my silence won't be questioned, or at the Empire of Hands where no one will care. Choices. You have heard that the Mew Exiles on Codex reward anyone who brings them a Mew Initiate. They pay with secrets of fire. There will be no such recompense from the apes of Port Stanton, where your navigator offers to leave you his tools, charts, and notebooks in return for his passage. Ah. Abandon your navigator at Codex to earn a valuable item or at Port Stanton in the Empire of Hands for a lesser reward but an increase in your mirrors. Or perhaps there is another less pleasant option. Less pleasant option? What? Oh, wait. I need three unaccountably peckish. Um... I will think about it. I will think about it. 